British blues pioneers to Beatle rivals to stadium giants and living legends. Mick, Keith, Brian, Charlie, Bill, and so many others along the way, we know them collectively as the Rolling Stones. From the British blues scene to hard edge pop, flower power, psychedelia, glam, country, reggae, and even disco, the Stones rode every wave and took part in nearly every flavor and offshoot of classic rock, all the while remaining unmistakably true to themselves. This is Watch Mojo's The Story and the Songs. I'm your curator, Eric Cohen, and this is the musical journey of the Rolling Stones. Now, before we get 2,000 light years from home, remember that we love hearing from you. So while you're here, best to let us know your favorite Stones factoid, and might as well lay down your own personal Stones Top 10. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. All right, well, let's let it bleed, let it loose, and let it rock. This is part one, the story. British rock band The Rolling Stones formed in 1962 in London, England. Commenter Stedno says, and their name derives from a Muddy Water song. The initial lineup consisted of vocalist Mick Jagger, guitarist Keith Richards, guitarist Brian Jones, and pianist Ian Stewart. Piano player Ian Stewart was meant to be a full-fledged member of the Rolling Stones, but he didn't because management thought he wasn't cool enough. Harsh tokes. With Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts forming the rhythm section. In 1962, the group played an eight-month residency at a London club, which caught the attention of their first label. This led to the release of their first singles, Come On and I Wanna Be Your Man. I wanna be your man. I wanna be your man. These charting singles allowed the Rolling Stones to book shows outside of London and eventually resulted in their 1964 self-titled debut. The Rolling Stones' album featured mostly R&B cover tunes and one Jagger and Richards pen track, Tell Me You're Coming Back. Drummer Charlie Watts didn't actually play the Stones' first show. Legend has it that the drums were manned by Mick Avery, who would go on to fame playing drums for the Kinks, but he flat out denies that he ever played that show with the Stones. Their sophomore effort, 12x5, also came out in 1964 and contained their first UK hit, It's All Over Now. This was followed by a commercially successful album entitled The Rolling Stones No. 2 in 1965. Their next record, Out of Our Heads, included many more original compositions than their previous work. Its most popular single, I Can't Get No Satisfaction, was the band's first international hit. 1966's Aftermath was the Rolling Stones' first album to feature songs written only by Jagger and Richards. Notable tracks were Have You Seen Your Mother Baby Standing in the Shadow and Paint It Black. The Beatles and the Rolling Stones were only rivals on the charts. In real life, they were actually buddies and often appeared on each other's material. Brian Jones on You Know My Name, Mick Jagger on All You Need Is Love, the two of them together on Baby You're a Rich Man, and Paul McCartney and John Lennon sang backups on the Stones' We Love You. I see my riddle and I want it painted black. In 1967, the band released Between the Buttons, which spawned the tunes Let's Spend the Night Together and Ruby Tuesday. That same year, a tabloid newspaper targeted the Rolling Stones in an article that sparked the interest of the authorities to their alleged drug use. Jagger, Richards and Jones were later charged with drug offenses. This was followed by the more psychedelic album, Their Satanic Majesty's Request, which included the single In Another Land. 1968 saw the release of the single Jumpin' Jack Flash and the album Beggar's Banquet. This more bluesy record produced the single Sympathy for the Devil. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. Two circus-themed concerts starring John Lennon, The Who, and The Rolling Stones themselves were also filmed that year and would later be released as the movie The Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus. The next year, Brian Jones left the band due to his drug problem and was replaced by Mick Taylor. Less than a month later, on July 3, 1969, Jones was found drowned in his swimming pool. Just two days later, the Stones performed at London's Hyde Park and debuted the single Honky Tonk Women. Honky -tonk, honky -tonk, 
That December, the album Let It Bleed, featuring the song Gimme Shelter, was released. The group also played the infamous Altamont Free concert, footage of which appeared in the 1970 documentary Gimme Shelter. The live album Get Your Yaya's Out, The Rolling Stones in Concert, also came out that year. Did you know George Lucas was a camera operator for the filming of Gimme Shelter? 1971's Sticky Fingers was their first record on their own label, Rolling Stones Records. It marked Taylor's first release with the band. YouTube user Nua Matt informs us that Sticky Fingers wasn't actually Mick Taylor's first appearance. He contributed two songs to Let It Bleed. And generated the hits Wild Horses and Brown Sugar. The next year, the record Exile on Main Street hit number one on the charts. It was followed by Goat's Head Soup, a less successful effort that still had a hit with the song Angie. Beatles John and Paul wrote the Stones' first hit, I Wanna Be Your Man, but it was actually George who got them signed by introducing them to the head of DECA, which was the label that actually turned the Beatles down. And it's Despite the success of the 1974 album It's Only Rock and Roll, Mick Taylor quit the Rolling Stones. The first album featuring his replacement, Ronnie Wood, was 1976's Black and Blue. While trying to finish their next live album, 1977's Love You Live, Keith Richards faced drug charges that delayed the recording sessions. When Mick Taylor left, the void was filled by Ronnie Wood, but that position was almost filled by Rory Gallagher, Jeff Beck, and Peter Frampton. In the late 70s, the Stones began to experience poor sales and reviews. The faster-paced rock and roll of their 1978 album, Some Girls, reignited their popularity, especially with the help of the single, Miss You. However, mounting tensions between Jagger and Richards affected the recording of their next effort, 1980's Emotional Rescue. The huge American tour that followed the release of the 1981 album Tattoo You was later documented in the 1983 film Let's Spend the Night Together. Their European tour of the following year saw the addition of another member to the Stones lineup, piano player Chuck Lavelle. After the release of the 1983 album Undercover, solo projects increased tensions between Jagger and Richards. As a result, 1986's Dirty Work contained many more Richards penned tracks than usual. Nevertheless, the pair reconciled after the death of Ian Stewart, and the Stones released Steel Wheels in 1989. Bill Wyman retired shortly thereafter. In the annals of rock and roll, it's cited that bassist Bill Wyman coined the term groupie when the band was touring in Australia in 1965. The Grammy-winning Voodoo Lounge would be Daryl Jones' first album as Wyman's replacement. This was followed by the 1997 album Bridges to Babylon, which received mixed reviews. A Bigger Bang was released in 2005, with shows from the ensuing tour recorded and eventually seen in the 2008 film Shine a Light. Their unique sound and lively shows have made the Rolling Stones one of the biggest rock bands of all time. They have been going strong since the 1960s, and their music will surely continue to do so for a long time. Now people like to rip on the Stones for still getting out there on stage, but you gotta give them credit, and it's that consistency that's gonna make this Herculean task of taking seven decades of music and reducing it to their ten finest songs. Number 10, Honky Tonk Women. Inspired by the Brazilian equivalent of the North American cowboy, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards penned this hard rock track that was released in the UK a day after Brian Jones' death. With its cowbell-driven beat, the three-minute track topped both the British and US charts. Though a honky-tonk version of this song was also recorded, it's the blues-influenced 7-inch single with its amped-up, riff-based sound that's got us hooked. Number 9, Brown Sugar.
Though its lewd and crude lyrics initially made waves, that's not the only thing that made Sticky Fingers' lead single top American charts. The hard rock number featured horns, blues rock riffs, and a groovy rhythm that just makes you want to dance. Despite its down and dirty sound, or perhaps because of it, Brown Sugar also went to number two in the UK and found a home on classic rock radio. Number eight, Wild Horses. With its roots, folk, and country rock influences, wild, wild this Sticky Fingers tune is an emotional and thoughtful ballad that demonstrates the Stones' softer side. With Richards writing the riff and chorus line and Jagger handling the verses, it's also a fine example of the two musicians' songwriting talents. So let's do some living. Charting within the Billboard Hot 100's Top 30, Wild Horses. Wild Horses is a popular concert track that's also spawned multiple covers. Commenter G.W. Wayner, or Gwainer, says, The number of albums and hit songs are truly amazing. By the way, back in the 60s, Mick Jagger and Marianne Faithful together were at the top of the beautiful people heap. Time is cruel to us all, but back in the day, Mick was the coolest dude around. Number seven, Tumbling Dice. With Ian Stewart's piano playing on full display and a choir complimenting Jagger's vocals, this rockin' single is one of the highlights from the Stones' Exile on Main Street double album. Counting the unfaithful ways of a gambling man, Tumbling Dice has a laid-back groove thanks to its bluesy, boogie-woogie style. But the Top 10 Smash also stands out for its trademark guitar figure and call-and-response conclusion. Number six, Start Me Up. The Stones went through dozens of takes, including a reggae rock number, before they came up with the hard rocking vibe of the tune that became Tattoo You's lead single. Opening with a now well-known Richards riff, Start Me Up keeps our attention with a thumping rhythm generated by Charlie Watts drumming and Bill Wyman's bass. Add Jagger's confident vocals and the Stones had another top 10 on the US and UK charts. Number five, you can't always get what you want. And if you try sometimes, you're just my fine. You do what you may. After the angelic voices of the London Bach choir pull you into this Let It Bleed single, some soft guitar and Jagger's poignant vocals keep you captivated. I tell you, and I went now to the demonstration. By mixing rock and gospel and adding French horn, the Stones showed they weren't afraid to change things up. Its relatable lyrics also helped the song become a staple at the band's live sets and in pop culture. That cake on the cover of Let It Bleed? That was real, and it was baked by celebrity chef Delia Smith. You're just my mind. You can watch me. Number four, 
paint it black. I see my riddle and I want it painted black. Thanks to Joan's sitar riff, you'd be hard pressed to find many classic rockers who don't love this raga rock and psychedelic rock number. By incorporating Indian influences to their sound, the Stones proved they weren't a one-note band. I could not foresee this thing happening to you. If I look hard enough. Fans and critics were so mesmerized by its dark and haunting atmosphere that Paint It Black topped both the U.S. and U.K. charts. It's also become one of the Stones' most covered songs. Number three, Sympathy for the Devil. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of a well and taste. Bolstered by Maracas and Congas, this rocker off Beggar's Banquet hypnotized critics and audiences with its samba inspired groove. Pleased to meet you. Hope you get my nerve. But it's Jagger's menacing vocals that truly bring this six minute plus song, narrated from Lucifer's point of view, to life. Nature. The band's performance was so convincing that the Stones were later accused of being devil worshippers. Regardless, Sympathy for the Devil remains one of their most loved tracks. Not Houston says, so why isn't Sympathy first? Good question. Two, Gimme Shelter. Penned by Jagger and Richards, the opener to Let It Bleed combines all of the band's musical talents to create an apocalyptic number that's simply unforgettable. Bolstered by Watts and Wyman's rhythm section, Gimme Shelter also boasts a unique and carefully crafted mood that chills us to the bone. but remains true to the Rolling Stones sound. Gimme Shelter, great song, has appeared to date in three Scorsese movies. Can you name them? Matt L. has an open letter to watch Mojo. On Gimme Shelter, you forgot badass vocals by Mary Clayton. That's a great story. If you don't know that story, look that up. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Can't get no satisfaction. I can't get no satisfaction. If Richards hadn't conceived this song's now famous riff in a dream, we may never have had one of the most recognizable and satisfactory riffs in rock history. Richards teamed up with Jagger to compose this rock and roller, and it quickly became the band's first American chart topper. Satisfaction didn't only propel the Stones to monstrous success, but also continues to earn critical acclaim and is often touted as one of the greatest songs ever. And the real Jerry Seinfeld says, This was a fine list. I think Jumping Jack Flash should have replaced Start Me Up. And in my opinion, Gimme Shelter is better than Satisfaction. But I can see your reasoning there. Anyways, Miss You, Beast of Burden, Waiting on a Friend, Can't You Hear Me Knocking, Get Off My Cloud, Ruby Tuesday, Let's Spend the Night Together, Happy, Midnight Rambler, and She's Got a Rainbow could have all been honorable mentions. But still a pretty good list. So 
how was that? Was it hard enough? Was it rough enough? Do you have mixed emotions? It's not easy to reduce 25 albums to just 10 cuts. I'm sure we left off something that you love. Let us know in the comments. In fact, the comments on the original video were pretty clear. Not enough exile on Main Street and a serious lack of Beast of Burden. If you need a little more Mick and Keefe action, feel free to check out Top 10 Rolling Stones Moments, Top 10 Greatest Rock Bands, they're in the thumbnail if that's any indicator, or Top 10 Rock Anthems. But before you go tumbling the dice, let me ask you this. Who's your favorite Keith co-guitarist? Do you go for Brian Jones' slide and experimental stuff? Or more into Mick Taylor's pristine blues purity or Ronnie Wood's rough and ragged swagger? Or are you one of those oddballs who likes to see Mick Jagger slinging a six string? All right, that's it for us. We'll see you next time. I'm Eric Cohen. This has been The Story in the Songs. Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.